who can remember why we made this top flat instead of a big hill? What's one of the reasons? Sophia. At Austin Discovery School, a tuition-free charter school since 2004, children dig into digs, discoveries in gardening and science. Along with a rigorous academic program, children learn to respect the community and the environment in which they live. Outdoors, the children apply classroom curriculum to design and build gardens that encourage imagination, along with stewardship in their school. Rebecca, we're trying to pull out a weed in here. Austin Discovery includes a junior master gardener program, but teacher and master gardener Rebecca Bohr wants every student to learn that food comes from the ground, not a store. When you open a charter school, you have to prove that you provide a service or cover a need that is not provided or covered by your local school district. And our educational philosophy is very different. We have the kids outside. Gardening is written as a part of the charter. The children plant winter and spring thanks to help from local farmers, Green Corn Project, and the Master Gardeners, along with nursery donations. The work is all worth it with the meals they make from the food they've grown. The biggest surprise to everybody is how much they love cabbage. And parents will come up to me and say, I can't believe my child ate cabbage. And I said, well, your child grew cabbage, and everything tastes good with sautéed onions. We talk about how the onions caramelize and produce the sugars. And so they love turnip greens with onions, cabbage with onions. So we, of course, have to grow our onions, too. But the gardens are about more than food. They're a connection to the rhythm of the seasons. The students learn to pay attention and notice fine details in the world around them. And the gardens are lessons in planning, organizing, and creating something for the future. Plus, indoors curriculum gets to go outside. Today we'll be planting the strawberries, which will baby all the way till spring. And the students are drawing their strawberry plants right now, sketching them in their journals, and we're going to talk about the transfer of energy from the sun to the plant to the bodies, and that's a part of our nutrition curriculum, plus part of our um, solar system curriculum. To get ready for a new garden, kindergartners hone their lessons in estimating and measuring. What is an um, estimate? Now the garden has to be five feet by 10 feet. You want to help her? Count to 10, what does that one say? And what can meet nature for inspiration and imagination? I see a little silhouette of a man. Cut a moose, cut a moose. Can you get a fandango? It took more than imagination to turn dusty grounds into a colorful labyrinth. The labyrinth came about as a collaboration between the art teacher and myself and what the students were learning in math. And this started three years ago. And the students were learning mandalas and labyrinths in art class, and the art teacher had them all design different labyrinths. Then they chose the one that was their favorite among all the students. The students got to choose, and they, they chose this pattern, which was designed by one of our students, Gabriel. The math club measured the space and outlined the paths. One parent constructed the metal beds per Gabriel's design, while other parents dug the pathways with a bobcat and laid crushed granite. Another parent designed the color wheel that the children planted with donations from local nurseries. On a fall day, fourth and fifth graders went to work clearing weeds and loosening the soil for donated spring wildflower seeds. The groups work in tribes to facilitate community to facilitate collaborative work, which is one of our 21st century skills. God. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. And they get to reteach uh, the other children. That really helps to cement their knowledge if they get to teach what they've already learned. That's another way of, of getting it in there, as well as the, the physical memory and the work. And parents help to maintain it. Children do not want to weed every day in gardening. If they just came out here and weeded every day, I wouldn't have them. <laughs> like the children, their parents contribute individual skills and interests. 
One family designed and built the rammed earth chicken palace, where egg sales from future residents will help finance the garden. Another family designed and built the chimney swift tower to support the junior master gardener's lessons in bird migration and air quality. Since the children have as much energy as birds, the gardens contribute to physical education. It just brings the whole stress level down. Adults know that too. You spend time outside, you work with your hands, your body learns what your mind is learning also. Your body muscle puts it in memory as well as your mind. And so it's teaching the whole body. It also gives them a stewardship and an ownership of this place and more respect of this place that, that they're doing their learning. It's a holistic education. A garden also teaches how to analyze and respond. Do you think it was, it just grew out like this? Look at the bottom. Has it been in dirt? No. Learning to nurture a responsibility is another objective. To nurture their wildlife, the children designed a pond installed thanks to a grant from the National Wildlife Federation, parental help, and a local nursery. It's going to be the center spot of our main outdoor classroom. Every day, the children see how their hands have made a difference. They come out and they play in this space and enjoy this space and know this space so that when they come out to work in this space, they can focus on the work. <laughs>